All right, we are live. Um, welcome, everyone, to the second day of um, the Ubuntu Online Summit. Uh, we are on the plenary. And uh, again, as uh, the previous US, we've got the pleasure of being here with uh, James Hilbert, Canonical's uh, CEO, who will be answering all of your questions related to Ubuntu, open source, uh, and, uh, and more. Um, the way this works, essentially, is that if you've got any questions, um, you can ask them directly on, uh, on the IRC channel. Uh, on summit.ubuntu.com, or you can even go directly to ubuntuonair.com, and there you will find the chat widget uh, where you can prepend um, any of your questions with the word question so that uh, it gets highlighted and we can then pick them up, and then um, we'll um, essentially pick them up as they come along. Um, I think other than that, Jane doesn't really need an introduction, so I think I'll just uh, move to the background and uh, let Jane um, take over the stage. Thank you, David. It's uh, it's great to be here again. I had such a good time doing this at the last Ubuntu Online Summit that I was really pleased when, when David and Michael asked me if I would do it again. Um, so I'm happy to answer your questions on any range of topics. I know there's been a lot of good discussion so far um, in the first day or two of this summit. We were just talking about how there seems to be a real air of excitement in the community now and, and that's certainly true within Canonical as well. I think a lot of the things that we've been working on over the last um, several cycles are now coming into fruition into a really tangible way. I know that people are trying out convergence um, and seeing how that behaves on their own devices at home. I love seeing the excitement coming through in the social media posts as people try it and have trouble but also discover new things to do with it and really grasp what what that powerful convergence concept can can bring to you. Um, and of course there's loads of excitement around Ubuntu Core, around snappy Ubuntu Core with not just the devices that people are building but also the opportunity to write snaps and define the behavior of, of that wide range of IoT devices that are that will surround us in this increasingly connected world. Um, so what do you want to know? Happy to answer any questions if we have any, or I can keep talking if nobody's asked any questions yet. <laughs> All right. I think questions are. I think people are quite interesting. People uh, questions are starting to pile up. So um, first question is from Rich Wing. Um, can you give us some idea as to what month the convergence phone will be ready in the online stores? I'm sorry. Could you repeat that again? Oh, sorry. Let me check. Um, can, can you give some idea as to what month the convergence phone will be ready in the online stores? Uh, to, um, so I will say early next year. I can't give you a precise date because um, it's an announcement for our partners to make generally. They're the ones who ship the the hardware, it's their their phone. You certainly can see the state of the software and how quickly it's developing um, and our hardware partners are, are following right along there. So I think you should you should be able to expect a device, a convergence device um, available for purchase in online stores in early 2016 um, but beyond that I you're, you're going to need to stay tuned for specific announcements. All right, next question comes from Alan Pope. Um, are Microsoft buying Canonical? <laughs> Popey. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know that that's a persistent rumor, um, but no, there's nothing, there's nothing like that happening. I, certainly, um, if, if there were, the Ubuntu Online Summit would be an unlikely place to announce it, although a, a fitting one, an appropriate one. But no, that's not true. All right, so we regret not having to uh, being able to share the news. But uh, on that note, let's uh, take the next question from Brian Linuxing. Um, Jane, what are your thoughts on the Ubuntu phone um, release dates, markets, availability, etc.? Um, so I suspect you know what's been released already. There have been two BQ phones released uh, initially in Europe and then a global launch for those who wanted it. And there will be there will be continued country-specific um, launches and initiatives following on that 
on that plan. Um, we've launched the Meizu phone in Europe already as well, and there will be continued developments there. Um, we continue to expand not just the range of devices, but the uh, and improve the software experience on those devices. So as you know, we do a, a regular cadence of over-the-air updates um, on those phones. We are trying to satisfy as much of the global demand as possible while balancing th the fact that we want to be very clear about what we're selling and to who we're selling it. So we're we're not aiming for high street sales yet. Um, that will come in time, but that that in the shop, walk in off the street and buy something is a really um, important milestone, but one which if you if you cross that threshold too early before the general public's ready for it and before your product's ready for it, you can get into to lots of trouble. Our focus now is in improving the phone experience, in expanding the range of content and apps and scopes on the phone, and in really driving forward on the on the convergence idea. So the next major milestones you'll see in the on the phone itself will be very tightly tied to the convergence concepts that that you see developing in the software. Next question comes from Rich Wing. Um, he's asking, what are your thoughts on religion and belief system? For example, is open source a belief system? Oh, that's a very interesting question. Um, is it a belief system? I think for some people it is. Um, for me, open source is not a belief system per se. I think openness is a belief system. A belief in openness, a belief in um, transparency, in the value of collaboration and and mutual benefit are all things that I that I believe in. I think open source is a manifestation of some of those things. I think it is a um, it's a very valuable and pragmatic manifestation of those beliefs. It's also a licensing model. Um, it's also a software development approach. Um, but I, for me, it's not a it's not a belief system per se. I think that that it is a an excellent way to to demonstrate and highlight some of those those core tenets of community. Um, and collaboration, which drive the things that we do with the Ubuntu community, that drive things that Canonical does, and which I think are are generally applicable in in today's society. All right, we've got uh, another question from a known face. Um, Michael Hall is asking, what current Ubuntu development are you most excited to see happening over the next year? Oh, it's. Um, it's two. Can I have? I have to have two. The <laughs> the first one is convergence. You know, we laid out this convergence idea. It must be four years ago now. Um, I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong on that. But it at uh, Ubuntu Summit several years ago, um, we laid out the idea of of the converged experience and that that vision for the future of personal computing. And then to tackle it, we started with the phone because that represented a sort of an extreme view, a reachable but extreme view from what was the Ubuntu desktop at that time. Um, and it has been um, in some ways a long time coming. When you count it in, in cycles, it feels like we've been through many cycles. When you count it in actual months on the calendar or years on the calendar, it's an amazing amount of progress um, in a relatively short time. I feel like the building blocks now are are solid. I know that the code is solid. I know that the design work is is very good. Um, and we're now able to put these building blocks that we've been working on for so long together in a way that's that's just delightful. Um, and I think it really is um, a, a very exciting time. You know, we, we think back to the 
times, for those of you who've been in the community for a long time, you'll remember that several years ago we started demonstrating these concepts with Ubuntu for Android, um, of a phone, an Android phone with the Ubuntu operating system also loaded on so that when you docked the phone in some way, you had an Ubuntu desktop. Um, and I remember just being blown away by that at the time and now that seems so clunky you know <laughs> it's so it's so old and clunky and the um, the the Ubuntu experience as we move into this convergence world is so smooth and so elegant that I think we're only beginning to discover what it really means for how people work and how people interact with their computers and what sorts of equipment you buy and use in what scenario. I don't think we're by any means done with this journey. I think it's it's an important milestone on the path. I think we'll continue to see a lot of evolution and a lot of change in that personal computing experience. But I think we're at the at the at the tip, at the beginning of a, of that major era of change. And I think that's I think that's really exciting, and I think it's it's very exciting that that Ubuntu's right here, um, and I hope that that everybody else is excited with it. That's that's one piece, and that will be a big focus for 1604, as you guys know, um, of the work that is being planned out this week, and the work that will continue over the next the next six months or so. Um, the other thing that I'm excited about is um, Snappy. Um, and Ubuntu Core and the range of devices that that are being made there. Um, we're the the amount of innovation that I think will will explode on top of Ubuntu Core is staggering. Um, the the folks that are building things on Ubuntu Core is already exciting and we're only right now we're still seeing relatively single purpose devices I don't think we've even begun to explore what it means when you can put a bunch of different snaps on on the drone or the robot you probably all saw the announcement the DGI announcement from earlier this week um, and there are a number of other companies who are building robots and drones and flying things Earl Copter um, was a is a project that we've highlighted in, over the last couple months that's super cool um, an Ubuntu um, uh, an Ubuntu core powered well they have a, a flying drone version and a crawling spider version um, that that I think it just injects a sense of of fun into the things that are that people are doing with Ubuntu that's really exciting. It's fun every day. I don't we don't know about all of them in advance because you know how it is. People can download Ubuntu and use it. And so sometimes I even find out about devices people are making by watching my Google alerts or seeing what's in my inbox every morning. Um, and and it's it's fun. So if anybody's if anybody's building devices with Ubuntu, feel free to to email and let us know about them because we don't we don't always know um, about the great things that people are building with them or post them on G plus or or anything like that. Um, and I think in the cycle in 16.04, we're also going to see just an uh, exponential amount of of adoption and improvement in Ubuntu Core, in Snapcraft, in the things that people are doing with it. One of the one of the great things about Ubuntu, one of the things that's always been so exciting about Canonical and Ubuntu, is what people do with the products we build. It's we can we get super passionate about Ubuntu itself, um, but it's a it's another level when t people take it and build on top of it. And I think what we'll see in the in the IoT space, building on top of Ubuntu Core, um, is is um, just a, an incredible amount of innovation that that I'm really looking forward to. All right, judging by the audience as well, I think everyone's really, really excited about all of this. We've got uh, just after this last qu uh, question, uh, we've, that generated quite a lot more of questions. <laughs> so let me just pick the next one. Um, Cheeseburg is asking, when will Unity 8 land for broader testing? When do you think it will be default? Um, so I can't. I don't know the answer to those. When will it land for broader 
testing. Um, David, you might actually be able to answer that. It will. I know the team's working hard on it. In fact, some of them are are here in the office. I'm in London right now. I'm in our London office, and some of the engineers are sprinting down at the other end of the office. Um, when will it be the default? Um, the answer there is when it's ready, when you guys tell us that it's ready. Um, we don't expect it to be the default for 16.04. What we want is we want we want to know when everybody says, or when there's some amount of, of consensus and opinion, that this stuff is amazing and it needs to be the default. Um, and we're going to make sure that it's that it's good and that we're ready for it before we make it the default. Um, so the if you want it to be the default, you can help test it and work on it and let us know when when you think it's ready to be the default. All right. So yeah, nothing nothing to add to that to my to my uh, from my side. Only to say that uh, we had uh, a great Q and A with the Unity guys um, yesterday. So make sure to go to summit.ubuntu.com and find that session. It's the Unity eight and convergence Q and A. All right. Um, Andrew Hazen, one of our uh, community core app developers, uh, developer of uh, the music app and now recently from the weather app, is asking, how has the return rate of the devices been? Uh, are the manufacturers generally happy with how the releases have gone? Oh, yeah, the return rate's been very, very low, um, less than 5%. Um, and the majority of that has been some some hardware issues with the with the devices itself which the manufacturers then replace that replace that hardware um, so both BQ and Meizu the partners who have shipped thus far are very happy both are planning future devices um, there's been a, a great reception there all right uh... Banana is asking, are the orange matte foxes Raspberry Pi for sale? Uh, and if not, why not? Oh, so those are, um, they're for sale, not not from us. Those are simply, those are just off the shelf boxes that we bought. Um, there's not, there's, we can, I've forgotten the name of the company that we bought them from, but I'm sure they'd be happy to, to sell more of them. They're completely off the shelf. You can, they come in different colors. Obviously, we like like the orange ones, um, but I'd be happy to to pass on the supplier that we bought them from, and I'm sure they'd they're Ubuntu fans, and I'm sure they'd be glad to to help provide more of them. All right, um, Richwing is asking, where did you go to university? I went to Haverford College in the U.S. It's a small liberal arts school outside of Philadelphia. I majored in math with a computer science concentration. Um, I then, well, then I worked for a couple years as a software developer, and then I went back to university and did a master's degree at Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, that was in uh, management of technology with an artificial intelligence concentration. And then I worked for a while longer, and because I like learning and like academic environments, I went back to university a third time and did an MBA degree from Oxford University here in the UK. Next question is from Ryan Lee Sipes. Are there any partners Ubuntu is in talks with that have a focus on North America? I'm guessing that that, that is a question related to phone and de and devices. And the answer is yes. We are talking to to um, both phone manufacturers and operators who have a focus on North America, um, and but don't have anything to announce in that regard right now. We'd like to get a good US-focused phone, and it, it remains um, something that we're working on, but but no announcements for now. All right, next question is from Cheeseburg. Where do you see open source and Ubuntu in the Internet of Things market that is growing? Do you think this will affect the appeal of open source? Um, in more traditional markets like desktop computing? Um, I th now th that's, it's an interesting question. So let me take the first part of where do I see it. I, um, we certainly think that Ubuntu 
is a great platform for people to build IoT devices with to to be that that um, core operating system platform of any smart connected device and Ubuntu Core or Snappy for short Snap the Snappy architecture in Ubuntu Core um, has been designed specifically um, for that world it comes out of the work we did on the phone but some of the the primary characteristics that we've added into Ubuntu for the phone in terms of transactional updates um, and and app isolation and some of the security work are exactly what's needed in the IoT world. Um, it's exactly what's missing when you hear the stories about smart connected devices that are being hacked or that don't have security updates and can't be updated. Um, and I think Ubuntu has a has a major role to play there as that platform for devices. Um, I think that op your question was about open source um, in particular, I believe. Um, and I think there is a space for open source. Obviously, Ubuntu is our, our view of the, the best instantiation of that, of that open source platform. I think what's needed there is a way to get the benefits of openness, get the benefits of open source, and be able to operate in a constrained environment in some cases. There are IoT devices that need to operate um, with um, uh, in a specific range of frequencies, for example. The FCC is concerned about what what devices are attached at what level and if it's and I think open source and Ubuntu and the Snappy architecture provide a mechanism to provide the freedom and openness where it's necessary and lock down um, specific elements where it's required. Um, it would be a shame, I think, if we went to a closed source proprietary solution just to provide those protections in the very small number of cases where they're necessary. Um, you also asked, I think, if it will, if I think it will drive additional desktop computing usage. That's a good question. I think, I think it might. I certainly would like to see it. I think what will happen there, the way that would work, would be the, the, the app development. It's the developers who are developing the applications that define the the behavior of IoT devices that. Um, to the extent that those those transfer and that world of developers translates over to the des I'll say the desktop market, but as you know from our convergence work, I think that's even the definition of what the desktop market is 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 changing these days. Um, I think there's a lot of overlap in that in that app developer world that will drive um, cross platform adoption um, and and certainly we'd like open source to be the to be the common theme there I saw a presentation a while ago that looked at the the number of developers in different communities and it compared the number of developers um, in the traditional embedded devices market and the number of developers um, coming from the the web and mobile world and it's those web and mobile developers who will who will really drive and dominate the um, IOT development market um, just by sheer number rather than the what has been the traditional embedded um, development um, approach and so I think I think that, that there may be a wave there that open source rides across IoT and into um, the that converged world of of personal computing as well. All right. So next question comes from Zvish, who's actually one of the uh, Ubucon organizers from uh, from Berlin. Question: If you have a if you had the chance to go back in time and change something in Ubuntu, which you can't do anymore. What would it be? Oh dear, what would it be? Um, I, 
<laughs> so if I could go way back, um, I think <laughs> I think um, oh, there's oh, that's a, such a good question because the things that I think of now, I, like I was going to say something about the um, some of the original design principles and the and the brown desktop. I just somebody recently posted an article going back with snapshots of. Um, screenshots of all the desktops over the years um, and it made me very nostalgic for the brown um, but it also made me remember all the controversy over it it's amazing sometimes the very the very small things that generate generate the most controversy um, I think I think on one hand I think oh we could have just avoided a lot of a lot of arguments there but on the other hand it helped it, it did help distinguish us and it helped make us different and it 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 helped create a real, a real bond with Ubuntu in those in those early years. Um, I think there's some things that we've done in the product um, that, in hindsight, we could have done differently or at a different time. So, for example, when we introduced the dash into the desktop, the Unity dash, in particular. Um, the Amazon scope and the sh shopping scope, which um, which was so divisive at the time. When you look now at the scopes on the phone, which consistently um, are cited as being some of the most the most pleasing behavior and most um, enjoyable features of the phone that and the the right edge swipe are the are the things that people always comment on um, the phone scopes are an, are an evolution but of the original desktop scope but it's the same it was the same concept we were we were exploring it was the same experience we were trying to get to um, we were perhaps premature in doing it on the desktop we perhaps didn't pick the best scopes we perhaps didn't have the right the right um, user experience to make it to make it really beneficial to desktop users. Um, so on one hand, I I think it would be nice to go back and be able to change that. But on the other hand, it's it's led us to where we are right now. I I um, would have been nice to get here in a slightly less rocky path, um, but but I th think that it's been instrumental in getting us here. We certainly learn lessons from experiences like that, and one of the one of the reasons, going back to the earlier question about when will Unity 8 be the default, that's one of the the lessons that we've learned is we want to make sure that 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 our user base um, is wants the feature that we're introducing and that the feature itself is ready. We don't want to push something prematurely. Um, so our our um, not putting Unity 8 as the default right away is a is a direct lesson learned and respect for the user base coming from those times when we've pushed something uh, perhaps prematurely um, before there was before it was ready and before the the user base and the community was ready for it. I also would would. Um, <laughs> I also would change some of some of the um, the the branding and logo and T-shirt choices that we've made over the years. I have an immense collection of Ubuntu T-shirts, and when I get to the bottom of the pile, sometimes I think, "Why in the world did we did we make one that looks like this?" Okay, <laughs> All right. Um, so some of you might have noticed that I'm being a bit selective with the questions right now. We've got a ton of them, and I know that some of you have asked multiple questions. So I'm just trying to see that everyone has got the chance to ask their questions. Um, so Mario Grip is asking, what was the canonic what was Canonical's response when Microsoft released Continuum? Um, so we watched it with interest um, I think it's I think it's a good thing I think it's um, validation of the evolution in the market that that we see I think it's um, I think it's a positive thing when when others uh, 
follow the the same path you you've put out um, it also makes me very anxious to get our our conversions capability out as quickly as possible and for it to mature as, as quickly as possible um, it's clear that that there's a race. Um, competition is good. It should keep us all on our toes. It should make us all excited and reaffirm the the value and importance of what we're doing and frankly the inevitability of what we're doing. Um, um, and it should also serve as a little bit of, a little bit of a wake up call. Um, it's been very interesting over the years. I think when you when you introduce something new, when it particularly when it changes people's work patterns changes changes hard um, it, it you we get we're very much creatures of habit we very much get get locked into routines of how we how we interact with something as personal as our as our computer um, again going going back to some of the historical stuff changing buttons from the right hand side to the left hand side can be a, a major issue um, something like convergence is going to throw all of those habits all there again, um, and we're going to we're going to learn together what it means for people's work habits and what it means for the environment that they want to live in. And the more work that others like Microsoft are doing in that in that area, I think the I think it helps bring bring all of us along as well. We shouldn't be complacent though. All right, Pavel Stolowski, who's one of the um, Unity API uh, slash scopes developers, is asking, would you say cloud is becoming more important given how much market share Ubuntu has in the cloud? Or do you see all markets equally important? Ubuntu's, our vision for Ubuntu is, is, is of, a, of a general platform across the span of, of devices, from, from cloud and server in the data center to the the range of personal computing and, and desktop types environments to the smart connected devices. Um, I think they're all equally important. I think they're at different stages of their of their life, life cycle and for Canonical as a business they're at, they're at different stages. Um, so they don't all behave equally. We don't invest equally in all of them. Um, but in terms of the importance to Canonical and to the importance of what we want Ubuntu to be, what we want it to be to the community, what we want it to enable in terms of innovation for our customers, um, they're, it, it, they're all important. All right. Um, next question comes from Benaisa. What are the latest news about uh, ROS, the robot operating system in Ubuntu? Oh, about Ra, R, the letters ROS, ROS. ROS, sorry, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, so it is a, that community, the ROS community, um, uses Ubuntu and Ubuntu Core extensively. Um, it the, the components of ROS um, have been made into a snap to be able to use on snappy Ubuntu core and we continue to work very closely um, with that community to make sure that that snappy provides the the, the best experience for people developing developing with ROS. There's lots of exciting work going on there and we're really interested in working with people who are who are in that that ROS community if you're if you're um, if you're part of that, if you're building things uh, with that software, um, we'd we'd love to for you to to be involved. Compute is asking, could you elaborate on why you feel Ubuntu Edge is not a good convergence scenario? Um, so I don't think I said, I think Ubuntu Edge is a good, oh, I mentioned Ubuntu for Android. I think that may be what the, the question oh, was. Oh, yeah, that's most probably. Yeah, so um, early on, uh, this was several years ago when we were, were developing the convergence ideas and exploring what worked, thinking about how people interact with technology now, how they interact with technology in the future, um, we built a, a 
prototype system basically that was called Ubuntu for Android, which is different than Ubuntu Edge. Um, and that was a an Ubuntu phone with or sorry, an Android phone with Ubuntu installed that operated as an Android phone, just normally, like your normal phone, and then when you connected it to a monitor and display, you got a traditional Ubuntu desktop. And there was um, some integration between the two operating systems in terms of a shared address book, in terms of messaging and phone calls, um, and alerts on those things coming into the Ubuntu desktop when you were in, when you were in desktop mode. I think that's that was the the beginning. That was the seed of of our ideas around convergence. I think it was on the right path, but it was awkward because it was two operating systems because it was two different sets of apps. Um, you, while you were running from a single device, you still felt like you were living in two different worlds. And I think a a key concept of convergence is that you you're living in one world regardless of the the size and shape of the piece of glass that's attached to that computing world. And so as we've moved forward and as um, Ubuntu has developed on phones, as Ubuntu Core and the Snap and Click models have developed, um, as Unity 8 has developed to give us a, a more consistent and flexible um, operating environment across devices. I think I think we're in a much smoother, more elegant um, convergence world. So that Ubuntu for Android system was was a good precur precursor, um, but the fact that it's two different operating systems um, was was very was very awkward and I think having a common platform underneath is really the key there. I think some of our competitors will struggle with that same thing. They may have when they have two different operating systems underneath there, even if they make both of them, it's still, they're still fundamentally, fundamentally different beasts. Um, and you've just seen within the last couple of weeks, Google's announcement about trying to merge Chrome and Android. I think that's one of the reasons why they're, they're trying to get down to one, one operating system on devices rather than two. Um, Ubuntu Edge was the name of the crowdfunding campaign um, with the super high-powered um, phone, and that was going to be a a Ubuntu Ubuntu experience, an Ubuntu converged experience. So I think the the model that we laid out there um, is exactly what we're building with convergence, um, and we're we're following the exact path that that we would have done with the Ubuntu Edge, what that Edge campaign would have done, what we didn't do, um, was make the make the hardware itself, make the handset itself, and, and make it as powerful and cool as as it would have been. Um, we, we continue, even without that campaign being successful, we've continued on the software development path, um, and you see that coming into fruition now, particularly in this cycle and, and in the 1604 release. Next question is from Jalad. Um, you, mentioned, you mentioned expanding app scope and feature offerings in the future. Can we expect performance to improve, or should current users upgrade their hardware, their hardware if they want better performance? I think we you should expect performance to improve. Um, we're also doing some work around some of the the navigation between scopes. In our in our user testing, we're finding that there's still some issues have around pe how people discover discover scopes and navigate around them, particularly in terms of um, some of the component content pieces that are embedded into a scope. And so we're doing some work um, that is still in the design phases now, but that is that is aimed at addressing some of those, those uh, just smoothing off some of the rough edges there. Um, and so there'll be there'll be continual improvements there. Our OTA schedule um, believe is a new update once every six weeks or so. Um, and you should see at various times not just feature improvements, but also um, performance and, and stability improvements in, the, in those OTAs. I think it's always fun to get new hardware. Um, and we'll have, 
we'll have some interesting hardware coming out next year, um, but you you'll be able to benefit from the the feature um, enhancements and performance enhancements um, as they come out in the OTAs as well. Next question is from Cheeseburg. Um, do you see an opportunity in smart cards? How does in sorry? Let me just repeat. Do you see an opportunity in smart cards? Um, has, has there been any interest from any partners? Smart cars. Um, smart cars. So there are a number of car manufacturers who are already working with Ubuntu. Um, Tesla uses Ubuntu. Um, um, there have been a couple smart cars in the R and D phase um, that are that use Ubuntu, um, and I think that's part of this this vast world of of innovation that that happens by making a great a great platform. We don't intend to to go specifically into the car business. We're not going to um, build a version of Ubuntu that's specifically meant for cars, but I think the improvements that we're making in terms of updatability and security around Ubuntu Core make it a, a, a perfect Platform there, and I I wouldn't be surprised at all if there's more if there's more automotive interest um, on the Snappy Ubuntu Core um, product as as the uptake there develops. Um, but you can see there's there's a number of of um, videos online from various car manufacturers where they've used Ubuntu um, both as a development environment and as a, a device control environment and an in in vehicle um, environment as well, but no, 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 no Ubuntu cars um, coming from Canonical anytime soon. All right, a related one perhaps. Uh, will we ever see an Ubuntu watch, a uh, Snappy watch? Um, so, would we ever see one again? I think it's the. I think it's another example of the kind of smart connected device that I that will be built on Ubuntu Core. Um, it, I expect that at some point there will be. There's um, there's just going to be this proliferation of of devices that that come out whose whose behavior, whose identity is defined by the software on top of them, much more so than the the physical form factor. Um, so while there's there's no no specific product announcement or product plan so don't interpret my yes but yes i think there will be ubuntu watches at at some point i think it's i think it's part of this as i said explosion of smart connected devices um, that will be that will be running ubuntu all right we've got another question from m hall um this EOS, we had a 10-year-old wondering what he needs to learn in order to one day work at Canonical. Do you have any advice for young students who already have an interest in software and open source? Uh, that's great. I didn't know about the 10-year-old. Um, I think I think my advice is to is to follow your passion. If you already have an interest, there's so many opportunities where you can where you can express that. I think you um, don't have to be limited to what you learn in school or do in the classroom. I think there's um, amazing things that can be done at, at any age. Um, if you want to work at Canonical someday, I would say being a member of the open source community and learning the ethos of the community um, is a is a great way to start. Um, learning there's so many life skills that people can learn as part of the of the open source community. You learn how to communicate across all mediums, um, not just face to face, but in video hangouts, in IRC, in email, in bug reports. You learn to communicate across such a wide range of people, the diversity in in the um, open source community, with the possible ex exception of gender diversity, is pretty, is pretty vast. I don't know many other things you can get involved with that 
that lets you work with people all all over the world, um, and the technical skills that you would develop by working in the in the community are, are astounding. Um, you get to work with some of the best the best people in the world, um, and that's there's just huge opportunity there. It's one of the reasons why we um, often recruit and find our not just our engineers but other people that work at Canonical out of the open source community. Um, they have the a range of not just programming skills but communication and life skills, um, problem solving in a respectful collaborative way that that's very valuable for any employer. All right. Ryan Lee uh, is asking, pricing for services la like Landscape seemed very much aimed at large enterprises. Have you considered a stripped down, cheaper version of the service for startups, small to, to medium sized businesses, and local and state governments? Um, so the, the, we've recently revised the landscape pricing so that um, for small estates of Ubuntu, you can use it for free. So I think it's up to 10. 10 servers you can you can use it for free and when you start to to get above that the pricing kicks in um, I wouldn't expect us to have a differentiated pricing between um, enterprise and small business per se um, but there is I believe pricing based on the the size of the the Ubuntu estate that you're that you're managing and so naturally the the larger estates tend to be from the from the larger companies. And next question is from Rich Wing. What is Canonical's position on doing a tablet Kickstarter campaign? Um, as Mark Shuttleworth has said, development is sorely needed in his Q&A yesterday. Um, what is our position on doing a tablet Kickstarter campaign? Um, I don't. We, first of all, we have no plans to do one. Um, my gut reaction is that I think it's unlikely that we would do one. I think there's. Um, I think we're more likely to to bring one to market with with a partner. Um, but I'm interested in what people think if they would like to like to see one there. The software's coming along, tablets, I'm not sure a, a, a tablet Kickstarter campaign would um, be as interesting to people as, as the Ubuntu Edge campaign was, which really was a, a groundbreaking experience on groundbreaking um, hardware. Um, so I think it's, I think it's unlikely, but um, but open to it, I guess, is my is my gut reaction. Um, I suspect what m I'm not sure what Mark was referring to in his in his Q and A. He may have been talking about the need to for f further enhancements in the software development experience. I'll check with him and see what he was talking about. All right. Next question is for um, from Banana. Um, what happened with the Meizu Ubuntu phones? So the Meizu phones were launched in Europe. They've sold out now um, um, in, a, in a positive way. We're talking to Meizu about what comes next. Um, there are new Meizu products on the roadmap. We're exploring whether we can restock any um, of the existing ones, if there's if there's any stock left in their in their factory process, um, so the what's happened with it is it was it was a success in Europe, and we're working on the on the next product releases. We continue. Meizu is very happy with the results. Um, there will be future announcements with with us and Meizu, um, and so stay tuned. Right. Uh, next question comes from uh, Sid Payton. 
with the discussion about background processes in mind, do you think that you need more developers for the form project? And uh, I'll add myself some background for some of you know, not familiar with the with the discussion. Um, the background process discussion was um, was a conversation on the Ubuntu phone mailing list about the architecture of, uh, of applications, or rather the app life cycle um, and the way we do it in, in Ubuntu. So with that in mind, um, do you think we need more developers uh, for the Ubuntu project, uh, Ubuntu phone project? Um, I think we've do we need more developers? Um, if it's an if that's an offer of volunteering, then <laughs> yes, absolutely. We'll always we'll always use more developers. Look, uh, um, somebody on our team recently said uh, that he's he's never bit met a software development team that could solve all their problems with just another five or ten engineers. That if they had another five or ten engineers, everything would be perfect. And I think almost every software development project feels like that um, nearly all of the time. Um, I'm very happy with the team that that we have right now working on Ubuntu, both the canonical team and the the uh, community team. I think there's I think there's good collaboration um, across canonical community and even our partners who who contribute and help make Ubuntu better. Um, we are not closing our doors to to anyone else who wants to to come and join and move the platform forward and it is true that things may move faster if we had if we had more developers um, but I th but I think we've got we've got a, a great team now um, and we're we're um, while we're doing some some hiring I don't think that that hiring a bunch more people to do solve a specific problem um, does much more than solve that specific problem and then there's the next problem that you also need another five or ten people or the next team that also needs another five or ten people. A question from uh, Michelle R. Uh, beside convergence, can we imagine some kind of equivalent uh, of Apple's continuity, specifically a uh, handoff, uh, that is instant communication between a phone and a computer? Yeah, I think we're yes. I um, maybe not that specifically, but I think we're just at the beginning of understanding what convergence means and how what it enables in terms of people's workflows with their phones and computers and other connected devices that may be at home or that they may carry around. Um, it may be that you you actually carry around your personal computer on a as on a, some kind of fob on your keychain, and you've got a disconnected piece of glass um, that that things appear in, in different places. Um, so I think we'll see. I I'm not sure about that handoff. I'm not familiar with that handoff feature in particular, but um, I think we'll will the will go way beyond just what we're seeing now of being able to power a larger display and have window management in a in a desktop environment and versus a phone environment when you're on a on a phone. Right. It's an exciting it's an exciting place to be and contribute to. Okay, so we're nearing up uh, the uh, the end of the Q and A. I think I'll pick two of the remaining questions. And then we can wrap it up to have time for uh, joining okay. the next ones. Um, question: Red Hat CEO recently wrote a book about leading an open source oriented company. Have you given any thoughts on writing a book? <laughs> yes, I have. As a matter of fact, um, in two different forms. One, I actually did uh, start to write a book at one. At one point, I'm a I'm a frustrated uh, novelist. Um, I started to write a book. This was before Canonical, um, around a um, sent in the in the defense contracting computer IT world, um, and got about a third of the way through that, I would say, and then Canonical came along. And so I had to put that aside because working on Ubuntu at Canonical was way more exciting than than my book, which was suffering from a real lack of, of plot. <laughs> um, and then the second one is, 
toying with the idea of a, a book about canonical. Um, I, I'm, I think we're not we're still on this adventure, but at some point the adventure will will reach a point um, where where there's a, a, a reasonable vantage point to to look back and reflect on, um, and I think that would be very interesting to do at some point. I think Canonical's done very interesting things in terms of um, our our vision for Ubuntu, our business model, our relationship with partners, and really importantly, our our relationship with the community um, and how we've tried to to explore that interaction between. Um, corporate and community interests and run a company that stays true to um, those open source um, ideals and the and the beliefs of openness and transparency that we talked about at the at the very beginning um, it's certainly the case we acknowledge that we haven't always gotten it right but I think I think it's a very interesting trajectory um, and I think it it would be interesting for others to to read and reflect on um, in terms of some of the things we've done as a company um, in, that have been so heavily um, influenced by and inspired by the open source community. Excellent. Really looking forward to the new books coming up soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't, don't say soon. I'm not promising. I'm not promising. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just to wrap up then, um, I'll take uh, one nice and easy one. Uh, what release of Ubuntu would you take when, you, when stranded on a desert, desert island? Oh, I would take, without a doubt, I would take the most recent one, and I would take the artwork from Hardy, the Hardy Heron, which is still my, my all-time favorite um, artwork. But, the, but, but newer is always better. All right, and I think with this, uh, we're um, at the end of our q and I'll just say thank you, uh, thanks a lot, Jane, for uh, joining in and answering the questions, um, being approachable, and essentially talking to our community. And thank you, everyone, for your great, uh, great questions. Thank you very much. Can I just say before we go, I just wanted to add a word of thanks to the to the community council, um, the outgoing community council, and and appreciation for the work that you've done over the years and specifically a call out for Elizabeth who served six years um, and had a had a big impact on the community council I really really appreciate that um, and to remind everybody about the UBUCONS coming up um, Berlin uh, sorry Orlando later this month Florida and the UBUCON summit in January which I hope to attend and hope that I'll see many of you there Excellent. All right. So I'll be there as well. The community team at Canonical will be there as well. Many other Canonicalers, many other community people. So looking forward to seeing everyone there. And with this, uh, I'll say check out the schedule on summit.ubuntu.com and uh, join the next sessions and enjoy. Thanks, Great. everyone. Thanks, everybody. All right.